What's up everybody, I'm Dane from Ground Strength and we're gonna cover what sleep means for increasing muscle mass and what it means for your general health overall, okay? So one of the big aspects behind sleep is that I have been fortunate enough that in 2018, 2019, I ended up spending a lot of time talking to a, a gentleman named Dr. Stephen Lockley. And so Stephen Lockley is a professor at Harvard and all of these discussions ended up being sparked because I had taken uh, two different athletes, uh, Giuliano Riato and Haley Reichert, to Uzbekistan. And while we had gone to Uzbekistan, I ended up seeing both my athletes were in tip top shape. I knew both of them could crush it. We ended up traveling, we traveled all across the world, all the way to Asia, to Uzbekistan, and Haley had to compete within two days of arriving uh, in, in Uzbekistan, and she ended up competing horribly, right? Very, very poorly. She did not do well at all. Um, and so I ended up contacting him while I was over in Uzbekistan, and ironically, Jules had been there with us in Uzbekistan for about five days prior to her competing. So she had time to adapt to the time change and she ended up winning a gold medal in the, in the Junior World Championships in the, in, the bronze, or, uh, in the snatch and she ended up winning a silver overall. So she performed extremely well, just like I had predicted. But going back to it, I had sat there and I'm like, okay, we know that sleep plays a very important role with recovery. We know that it plays a very important role with brain function, but we don't really know one, like what are the parameters that we need regarding sleep so that we continue to make progress. Um, and what ends up happening is we have this long discussion over months and months and months. And Dr. Lockley helped me tremendously to comprehend what sleep is and what it means and what it means, especially for sports performance. And so First of all, if we see a decrease in hours of sleep, okay, we know what happens. We know that there's a decrease in testosterone and we know, especially based off of um, pr prior research and especially if you, if you want more information on what happens with a decrease in testosterone, head over and check out my hormones video and what hormones mean for building muscle mass. But we do know for certain that when testosterone decreases, so does muscle protein synthesis. When muscle protein synthesis decreases, our ability to recover is lower and we can't get stronger, right? We also know this is the biggest aspect behind recognition with hours of sleep. There's, in the United States, there's tons of research on third shift workers, okay? So we can, we can analyze third shift workers and we know that third shift workers have a higher rate of error compared to first and second shift workers by up to 30%, okay? So immediately we know that cognition drops dramatically. Uh, we know that third shift workers have greater uh, levels of depression and greater levels of disease, chronic illness. We also know that ironically, the day after daylight savings, there's 17% more crashes on the road the, the Monday after daylight savings than any other time throughout the year. And we also have doctors that are working 24 hour shifts. We know that doctors, when they leave the office after a 24 hour shift, are two times more likely to get into an accident than if they are working an eight to 12 hour shift. So what does that mean for lifting, right? What does that mean for, for gaining strength? It means that if we are not, one, if, if, if our testosterone is not where it needs to be for us individually, we know that it's not gonna trigger IGF-1, we know that it's not gonna trigger growth hormone, and we know that muscle protein synthesis will not be optimized, and we're not gonna be able to recover. Two, we know that mentally we're not gonna be as focused. We're not, we know that we're gonna get into a training session, we're gonna be sluggish, we're gonna be fatigued, and we're not gonna bring everything that we need to mentally to really perform at our absolute best. And on top of that, if when, when we don't sleep as long, we tend to try and take stimulants like caffeine, and caffeine has a lower impact on somebody who's already fatigued. So if they are fully recovered, and I take 500, let's say I take uh, 500 milligrams of caffeine, and I've slept for eight to 10 hours, versus I take 500 milligrams and I sleep for six hours, it will impact me greater when I sleep for eight hours than it does if I sleep for six hours. So that's one aspect behind there that having the right amount of sleep is absolutely paramount. And what does that mean? How, how do we, how does our body go about 
um, analyzing sleep. And that there's there's two systems that our body uses. It's the light dark system and the circadian rhythm. And so. The circadian rhythm is something where when you wake up, it's almost like every three hours you get this nice boost of energy and it, and it basically guides your body to understand when sleep pressure is being heightened and you're tired and you need to go to bed, right? So um, after three hours of being awake, you start to feel really, really good. About six hours after being awake, you feel amazing. About nine hours after being awake, you start to to ease down and that's when your body is telling you to split between the between day and night and then on and then at 12 hours now it's time to go to bed and and the way we go about using the light and dark system is that we understand that as we're absorbing um, natural light from outside our body's awareness is heightened a little bit greater and then as it gets darker we prepare for sleep so that's how that ends up working um, but how much sleep comes into play okay so if we've got adults here there's been research where they've taken adults and they've put them into places where they just are completely disconnected from the world, right? Where they're, okay, let's see, let's see what it's like. Let's see what it's like to sleep naturally. And, the, and in these studies, we've seen um, 14, 15 hours of sleep for the first two or three days. So they're paying back, paying back their sleep debt or their sleep deprivation, right? And then after about three or four days, they slowly creep down until naturally older adults tend to sleep for naturally for seven to eight hours. So about seven and a half hours for adults with younger teenagers or, or, or even um, 20 year olds is that what we end up seeing is the same thing. They, they're sleeping for 14, 15 hours for the first two or three days. And then all of a sudden it slowly creeps down and then naturally they're going to end up sleeping for nine to 10 hours. So what that means is for us to have an increase or, or a proper moderation of our hormones, of our testosterone, of our, of our RGF one, of our growth hormone, of, of, of cortisol, even and all these different hormones for us to be functioning properly from a hormonal physiological, physiological perspective as adults, we need to be getting at least seven and a half hours of sleep as athletes or teenagers, but specifically athletes, we need to be getting nine and a half hours of sleep. Okay, nine and a half hours of sleep to optimize our hormone profile and to also optimize our brain. And we've got to recognize that when our brain is on point, when we're firing on all cylinders, we can perform our absolute best. And when we comprehend that light and dark system and in the, in the, this factors into all that third shift aspect so think about third shifters will on the weekends you know they'll try and swip, flip their 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 sleep uh patterns and it's essentially like going through a 12 hour time zone change every single week and that's why these these guys and, and women end up having uh 15 years less life expectancy that's what sleep deprivation does over a long period of time and on a day-to-day -day basis, it has a very significant impact on sports performance. But what can we do? So what, how, can, how can we understand sleep and how can we make sleep better? So first, we've got to split the day and prioritize sleep. We have to prioritize sleep, right? We have to sit there and say, okay, I want to split the day so that we can go throughout the day and train. We can wake up early in the morning, we can train in the morning, we can train in the afternoon, and then as we're preparing to recover, we set a tone in the evening, our body understands it's getting close to rest time. It's close to that rest period. It's close to, to, to sleeping, right? So in the, in the evening, we need to try and avoid blue light. We need to try and avoid fluorescent lights. We need to try and avoid bright lights. We, try, we should be around uh, darker tone lights, uh, red lights, something like that. We need to avoid caffeine after two o'clock in the afternoon. We need to avoid the TV. We need to avoid Instagram and social media. And we, what we can do during this time is we get a nice meal, we have our protein, and we're starting to relax and we're starting to split the day with the night. And now all of a sudden we can meditate, we can do yoga, we can do, we can turn on relaxing music, we can get away from social media and we can start to calm ourselves down as we get into that sleep period. And ultimately, we've got to be fully relaxed to be able to go to sl sleep properly, put up black, uh, blackout curtains so that we are in a very dark situation uh, in, our, in our bedrooms, make sure that all the blue lights are off, that our cell phones are off and we're only using it for an alarm clock, 
make sure everything's put in place. All distractions, the TV shut off, do not sleep with the TV on. Go to bed and, and that, that preparation, that splitting of the day, splitting the daytime from the nighttime and preparing for sleep and prioritizing it is what's going to lead to incredible gains in muscle mass because you'll see over time, every single day when you prioritize sleep, you'll be able to approach training at a, in a more clear state. You'll be able to put out power and you will be able to recover faster so that you can handle more and more volume and more intensity and ultimately that's what's going to lead to those massive muscular gains and i even recommend that prior to sleep you take zma and and you are always taking creatine because even when you do have sleep deprivation studies have shown that creatine can have a positive impact on uh, on cognition and handling sleep deprivation so use these tactics throughout the day uh, use meditation, use yoga, especially in the evening, turn off your TV, prepare for sleep and make sleep an absolute priority because when it, when you can get that nine and a half to 10 hours of sleep as an athlete, you will see massive growth in your bench press, in your sports performance, in your snatches, in your cleans, whatever it is that you're doing that's a challenge to you, you will be able to bust through those plateaus. So if you like this content, like, subscribe, share all over YouTube, share all over Instagram, put it all over Facebook, head over to grindstrength.com. You can pick up our mass builder program for $49.99. Peace.